This is part three of a series on palpation for beginners, not requiring a partner. And this video will be on proprioception. At the end of the video, I will show you how to balance two forks on a toothpick, on a toothpick, and a salt shaker. And while you may not be able to get it the first time, or while standing and holding, um, with practice and paying attention and doing exercises that can help bring your proprioception more to your conscious awareness, it is um, possible for you to do little nifty party tricks like that until you start showing off and wiggling everything around. Okay, so where to begin then? Um, proprioception, what is it? So proprioception is the nervous system's uh, ability to perceive where your body parts are in space and then also how they are moving. So um, this happens all the time. Your subconscious is paying attention to how you move when you go to grab something or write your name or something like that. As far as palpation wise, um, it is useful because if I have a good sense of where me is in space, then when I take my hands and place them on someone else and I'm feeling how do their tissues accommodate and respond to the force that I am putting in them, I can have a better sense of how does their body move. So I'm not um, linked up and feeling through their proprioceptors but by getting a better sense of my own proprioceptors, that's how I can better palpate and feel. Um, it's useful for diagnosis, but also if you end up going the way of doing um, manual therapies or treatments, you want that proprioceptive feedback when you're applying a technique so that you can feel how is the body accommodating the force you're putting into it. And that's what ends up making the difference between a technique that is effective and a technique that looks outwardly like, well, I was doing what my teacher showed me, but you didn't get the result that you wanted. So that's gonna be proprioceptors. The two main proprioceptors um, that people like to talk about are your Golgi tendon organ, and those are gonna be in the tendons, which um, are where your muscles insert onto a bone. That's a tendon, like right here's my biceps tendon, okay? And then the other place is um, inside the actual muscles themselves, and those are called the muscle spindle fibers, so actually in here. So that helps my nervous system know where I am and how things are moving. Like right now I can tell an experience in life tells me I'm moving through something that feels like a gas. It doesn't feel like a fluid. It doesn't feel like some kind of a wishy-washy solid. It's a gas, okay? So if you can get a sense of yourself and then how you move um, or how the stuff surrounding you accommodates your force. Similar thing, I'm leaning against the treatment table bes uh, behind me, and so I can get a sense of what that feels like. All right, um, an important concept to practicing and using palpation is grounding yourself and not in a esoteric energetic way, but in a real physics, um, palpable physical way in that if I have a sense of what my body is in contact with, if I support my body with more solid structures, then I can get a better sense of whatever I'm training my focus on to be able to appreciate how my proprioceptors and how my body moves when I'm touching that. So, um, let's start with some magnets. So these ones are nice in that red is gonna be the North Pole and blue is going to be the South Pole. Um, but you can pick up a pair of garden variety, like magnetized hematite, type of magnets at different places as well. And those are just as good. Any magnet's gonna have a north and south pole. But for visual demonstration, so that you can see, right? So when you have opposite poles of a magnet towards each other, they attract. So you can do exercises where you feel, when can I first start feeling the attraction of these magnets? Now, in order to better feel them, I want to ground myself. So I want to pay attention to what are my feet doing? You can't see, but I go, all right, I'm just standing kind of stork-legged. So why don't I get on both feet? 
why don't I sit a little bit on the table behind me and then relax my arms and kind of feel how that's them, this is me. All right, so then my attention can just go and focus on how are my arms being either pulled towards something or when I switch to the same poles, repulsed from each other. All right, so these are reasonably strong magnets, not crazy strong. And right about here, I can start to feel that it wants to pull my hands towards each other, okay? And then I'm obviously fighting a little bit, and then I give in. Or you can not fight at all. You can try to have your arms be light as feathers and just bring them closer and closer. And right there, I start to feel it, and I allow it to go towards each other. For our opposites, you are going to have to try to push them together, okay, because they want to push you apart. I'm grounded. Here are my arms. I'm bringing my north and my north towards each other. And when do I feel like right there? They start to push away. If I could do a little bit more force, I can get them closer. Then I can reach that point where you know you kind of slip and slide and around that invisible magnetic force. These ones aren't super strong, so I can't actually touch the mags together if I wanted to. So magnets are a great way to get in contact and try to focus on what does that feel like when I'm being pulled towards something or pushed away from something. That's going to help you um, when you get your hands onto real living people because different tissues either allow you to sink into them um, or don't allow you, which sometimes can feel like being pushed away. As you get better at palpation, heat and um, other kind of things can actually almost feel like a little bit like it's trying to push you away and you'll learn what those different feelings mean with practice. All right, other thing that you can do is the game of operation. All right, I don't know if you ever played this. Um, this one is useful in that I've got metal pincers. And if you've never played this before, each of the openings are surrounded by metal and there's objects inside. So you want to try to take the object out without having this metal go in contact with that metal because if you do, it completes the circuit. There's a battery in the back. Once you complete the circuit, his nose lights up and he makes some noise, okay? So they have all sorts of different things in here that you can take out. So that is um, a good uh, exercise to do. This one really helps you just with kind of your proprioceptions because the aim of the game is to not come in contact with the metal or in this come in contact with it at all other than what you're trying to take out of there. So it is nice that there's a little rubber rubber band down at the bottom because um, that one maybe there's a little bit of interaction of how does that force respond to you moving it or pulling it around. The other thing is you may find similar thing keeping that concept of grounding yourself um, that when you have it on the table that maybe how do you have your arm positioned or do you rest your forearm gently or do you put like a finger somewhere to kind of ground yourself so that you can get in there and do what you need to do to pull that out okay So then, what else do I have back here? This is Jenga, if you've never played it. Basically, you have wooden blocks stacked, and when you play it with other people, um, the object is, and I guess even with yourself, the object is not to be the one who moves a block and makes the tower fall. So ideally, you want to remove a block and you want to set it on top. Um, perpendicular to however the row below it is positioned. How do I know which ones to that are safe to take out and won't make the tower fall? So once again, I'm grounded for me. I got my feet on the floor, I'm on my seat, and um, I'm not like this because with this, I can't feel stuff. But when my arms are up, I actually can get a better sense of the proprioceptors of my whole back and my whole torso. And while I'm exaggerating the motion, this is kind of the force that I'm putting into a block. So I'm leaning with my whole body. Now I'm doing it minusculely so that you can't really see that my body is leaning. 
but your proprioceptors can pick up on very, very slight amounts of, hey, we were planning on going that direction and we couldn't. And then in your mind that translates to resistance of force. So here I am with my arms kind of balanced and this one, what I'm trying to do is go like that and it's not easily coming with me. So I'm going to abandon that one. I don't want to fail so soon just starting out. Oh look, I tried to do the same thing with this one and it worked. But I didn't do this large forceful motion where I'd accidentally yank out the one and make the tower fall. You need to get your proprioceptive conscious awareness so refined that you can just do the very slightest, almost even just thinking about moving. Because just thinking about moving activates areas in the brain that light up and actually does slightly initiate that motion. So you want to get to that point eventually with your palpation and proprioceptive conscious um, interplay and awareness that you can almost just think about something and that's enough of a force to kind of test it. All right, so Jenga aside, um, another important thing is going to be that when you're palpating the body, there's going to be stuff inside that you are going to want to get a sense of how it accommodates your force that you're pushing into. Um, if you're examining the abdomen, you're going to want to get a sense of pushing on intestines and pushing them into deeper intestines and maybe getting a sense of a big blood vessel that's really deep down in there, the aor aorta and how it's pulsing up against the intestines and pulsing up against your hands. When you're trying to get joint range of motion, you're going to be holding onto a limb and you're going to have the bone covered in all the soft tissue. But your mind's eye is going to have to have a sense of if you're really trying to examine that joint and how it's moving, I might be holding onto an arm and my hands are in contact with the soft tissues, but I need to be able to bring my conscious awareness to the bone and not just the bone here, but I need to be able to feel what's happening up here in this glenohumeral joint where my this long bone, the humerus, meets up with my scapula there and how it's moving. How can I possibly feel what's going on in here if I'm down by the elbow and I'm moving it? Well, that's your proprioception. So the mind is amazing and can actually create um, what we call physician extensor, or yeah, well, I, if I could say it, physician extenders, um, or I forget the uh, neuro, uh, physiology, psychology term for it, since, you know, non-physicians also do this all the time, right? If you're taking a screwdriver and you're screwing something in, you have to be able to feel through the screwdriver and how it meets up with the screw and what you're screwing it into. So you could do things like that. You know, you can do useful proprioceptive exercises where you're building a birdhouse or something like that. That's fine. Um, but if that's not your thing and you got some chopsticks around, um, so... If you can do it like that, that just might be a lesson in and of itself if you haven't been using chopsticks for years. Um, or they do have ones that are connected so you don't have to worry about how do you hold it in your hands. Okay, but that is a nice little proprioceptive thing is learning how to eat with chopsticks. Uh, if you know how to do that or I guess if for some reason you want to use these ones, you can. So what kind of things could we do with chopsticks? All right, so putting puzzles together. My eyes have to be open for this so I can see where I want to put the puzzle piece. I'm going to put Kentucky in here on this little US map. Now, I can just use one arm and do it, but that grounding concept again, I think when you're starting out, am I well grounded? If I have one hand on one set of the puzzle, and then the other hand moving that other piece, it's going to be a lot easier for my mind to make sense of am I properly inserting the ends of the puzzles together to connect them because I'm getting feedback sensory info through this hand as well as through these chopsticks into this right side. All right, so there's Kentucky and you could put a puzzle together if you'd like. Other things that you can do is get a sense for foods, okay? Um, I have these nuts out here um, just mainly to say how sometimes when you're using these things, and especially when you're starting out, 
um, similarly sized things that have similar densities are not necessarily good objects. So the way this cashew squishes versus this almond squishes versus this pistachio is kind of similarly. But if I just want to work on that whole proprioception ability to pick it up, that might be useful for these ones. If I want to work a little bit more on my sense of the give of eventually tissues, but uh, these are tissues, plant tissues, okay. Um, I have some cut up carrots, I have some cut up pickles, and I have some blueberries. So I can grab a carrot and I can squish it and I can get a sense of how does it let me squish it. So in contact is my chopsticks, but I'm using proprioceptors all the way up into my arm to get a sense of how well this squishes versus, ooh, goodbye pickle, how well a pickle squishes. Oh, here's an end piece, that's a little difficult, versus how well a blueberry squishes. I didn't do that intentionally. I do not recommend eating this medley afterwards, but to each their own. Okay, so there's other things that you can do um, with chopsticks and on to the piece de resistance. All right, so for this one, salt shaker, depending if the hole's too big, these ones, the holes are too big, so I put tape over it to try to kind of um, make the hole smaller or you could put a little tissue paper in there. I pick one toothpick. And so, unfortunately, this one wiggles around a little bit. I'd like a little bit of a snugger um, fit for this delicate balancing act. The other thing is, this thing, oops, almost knocked over Jenga Tower, has a little gift, so you might want to start out on a solid surface, which I could, but eh, I'll make it difficult for myself. All right, uh, another toothpick, and then two forks. What do you do with your forks? You're going to interlace your forks. Okay, so there are my forks. And then I'm going to hold them kind of like that. And then I'm going to interdigitate or lace this toothpick in the middle between the middle two prongs. Okay. All right. So at first you can just get that down and see if maybe you can balance it on your finger. Finger is definitely a lot thicker and easier than on the tip of another toothpick. And then I'm going to ground myself floor. <sighs> Stool, elbows on the table. If this was more solid, I might just come down on it and try to put it on. But since this has a little bit of a give, I'm actually going to help ground my salt shaker and my toothpick. How do I know that I'm placing them right? My proprioceptors are telling me so. I'm going to hold on to the bottom of the salt shaker just because of how this is a not super solid surface. And because of my toothpick not being firmly planted, it's kind of turned into the leaning tower of um, toothpick fork. So I have to hold on to it because the weight, the new neutral, this pathologic neutral has been shifted over to this side and the poor thing will fall over most likely if I let go of it, but maybe not for a moment. Oh, yay. Okay, good. So little by little, as the salt shaker is pushing into this soft table with time, going to end up going that way because this material uh, is changing. So I hope that um, some of those exercises might be told you, useful. Um, also, if you think of some other ones that you found are helpful for proprioception um, and bring it into better awareness, please put into the comments or email me. I would love to hear from you. And uh, most importantly, have fun learning.